whole point of the monetary system, the initial point, what I would say, as a point of logic, the whole point, I know there are other points, a lot of, lots of lobbyists have all kinds of points in their motion, is to provision government. Okay? You want to be able to move people from the private sector, move real resources from the private sector to the public sector. You start off and you say, we'd like to have an army, we would like to have a legal system. Well, how do you get people to move from the private sector to the public sector? You could ask for volunteers, it doesn't really work all that well. Uh, it's been tried the way that we do it, now that might come up with a better way. If you slap on a tax on something that nobody has, and then in order to get the funds to pay that tax, you've got to come to the government form, and that way the government can spend its otherwise worthless currency to provision itself. The difference between money and litter is whether there's a the tax man. The guy with the nine million is a tax man. You can't enforce tax collection. The, the value of the dollar goes to zero. We don't know what they are. Here is some more evidence of things on which humans carve notches. What are these? We know what these are because we can read them. Okay. Does anyone know what the things on the left are? Tally sticks. Okay. Stop and stub. And we all have heard the term. Raise a tally. So the crown when he wanted to buy sheep from you, would issue a tally stick to you. You would accept this in payment for the sheep you sold to the king. Okay? And there would be the stick and split in the stock and stub to keep a record. How about these? Okay, finally you see something, and, ah, there's money. Okay, what are these? These are records, just like the tally stick. Their records of credits and debits. And of course today, the currency is fairly insignificant. Most of these records are kept electronically on balance sheet. Okay, so what is money? It's a social unit of account. And in fact, it is almost always a state money of account. In the United States, it's the dollar. The dollar, our money unit, is like an inch or a foot or a pound, okay, or a liter. It's a measuring unit. We then have money things that are denominated in our money unit. It's a little bit confusing in the United States because we use the word dollar to indicate both the measuring unit and the thing that's being measured, a little piece of paper that's green. Okay, That has not always been the case in uh, monetary history, but in the United States it is true. We then have a hierarchy of these money things. My professor, Hyman Minsky, used to always say, you know, anybody can create money, and he meant money things. And he would add, problem lies in getting it accepted. The government's money things are widely accepted. Almost always the money things are denominated in the state's money of account, dollars. What backs up our money? When I started teaching in the early 80s, I would ask my students, and probably three quarters of economic students said gold. Well, it wasn't true even then, okay? Today, almost nobody is confused about We need to back our money with gold, right? So now they know that it's not. But it sounds like there's nothing that backs up the currency. You don't want to look behind the dollar bill. There's nothing there, right? Okay, the alternative view, modern money view. 
Use of the currency and value money are based on the power of the issuing authority, not on intrinsic value. That should be fairly obvious now, okay? Where most of our money things are just electronic entries on balance sheets. Even in the case of the government, that's the way that it mostly spends, not by issuing green paper money, but through an electronic entry. The state played the central role in the evolution of money, and from the beginning, used and in fact purposely created the monetary system to move resources to the public sector. That was the purpose of creating a monetary system. As a shorthand, what we say is taxes drive money. Taxes are denominated in the state's unit of account. The state spends its currency into existence. When you got that tally stick from the crown, why on earth would you sell your sheep to the crown for a stick? Because you could use your half of the stick to pay your taxes. Today, it's mostly taxes that drive money, but any form of an obligation that you owe the authorities will work to drive the currency. Experiment. Yeah, this is my this is my world now. This is my country. Well, half of you are going to be my country. This is the country of Keltonia. I am the government. I have the taxing authority. I also have a standing army, courts, prisons, and so forth. Half of you are my domestic private sector. You're the households and the businesses in the nation of Peltonia. You're all subject to a tax in this great country. And so, let's say 200 Keltonis. You have to pay me 200 Keltonis this year, okay? What does that mean? If we record this on balance sheets, it means now you're in debt to me, right? I have an accounts receivable, I have taxes due, you have a debt. And I just reduced your net worth. Now, let's settle the obligation. Go ahead and pay your taxes. Sorry, don't have me go down. You can't! What do you mean you can't? You can't because I haven't spent any Keltonis into existence yet. The money to pay taxes comes from government spending. I'll hire some of you. You'll build roadways for me, and I'll pay you Eltonis. Then you can pay your taxes. Okay? I'm gonna pay 500. Now you're gonna pay your taxes. See, I, cr I credited your account, I gave you the 500, but now let's settle up. Taxes are paid. What are your net financial assets? 300 Keltonis. This is a simple, fundamental accounting truth. This is not gimmickry. This is not a theory. This is a matter of accounting. It is a 